an Indian Muslim man asked Sheikh Didat on how to convince his non-Muslim friend about the existence of God. I was having argument with a Hindu fellow who was worshipping his God. I said, these are all stones and you are worshipping them. Why don't you become Muslim and uh, worship Allah? He said, if you give me some direct evidence of existence of God, then I will become Muslim. So I seek your guidance. What should I tell him now? Let the good Sheikh explain. I seek your guidance regarding a question posed by a non-Muslim regarding existence of Allah, existence of God. I was having argument with a Hindu fellow who was worshipping his God. He said, this is the God of Lakshmi, this is the God of power, this is God of success. So I said, these are all stones and you are worshipping them. Why don't you become Muslim and uh, worship Allah? He said that if you prove to me that Allah exists, then I will become Muslim. I told him that God has created you, God has created me, He has created the entire world, the mountains, the sky, the earth, the sun, the moon. And so God is there. He said, these are all the indirect evidences of existence of God. He said, if you give me some direct evidence of existence of God, then I will become Muslim. I told him that, okay, if you are not convinced with this, then you tell me what is the direct evidence of existence of God. Then he said, I don't have, that's why I am worshipping so many gods. So I seek your guidance in this connection. What should I tell him now? You see, it depends upon the capacity of the individual. Everyone, you haven't got a set line of arguments, debates. The person, what are his capacities, understanding? With regards to the existence of God, the very simplest of thing is, this is God exists because we exist. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran a line of approach. He says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ billah? How can you not believe in Allah? See, if this man is an educated man, really educated, not just, you know, a fellow who's passed class one, two, or three, and he can speak English, but really he's got some sense in him. He's reasoning with us. Allah is reasoning with us. Say, billah? How can you not believe in Allah? Wa kuntum amwatan. Seeing that you were non-existent. You were dead, non-existent. For ahyakum, and you brought you into being. Thumma yumitukum, he will cause you to die. Thumma yuhikum, he will bring you back to life again. Thumma ilayhi turja'un, and to him will be your return. So he's setting a thought process. Think, think back. If this man has got senses, think back. Man. Today, we are having what is called a population explosion. We are on the world today about 5 billion people. If you can grasp that 5 billion today, we are on earth. He said, no, 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 I know that population explosion, they're trying to say different countries, reduce your birth rate. But as you go back into history, the population starts dwindling. Until, let's say 6,000, 10,000, 50,000 years ago, you come to almost nothing, a pair. And even before that, according to your understanding, who, if you have got some education, is talking about uh, evolution taking place, Let's agree with him for a moment. I said, look, when this evolution came, there was no man. From the primordial substance in the mire, in the sea, the amoeba started, and you know, according to his explanation, let's agree with him. These things came into being. Right. Man came into being, and the elephant, and the snake, and the flea, everything came from that primordial substance. I said, yes. Before that, you say that the earth was a molten mass. Nothing, no life. No plants, no animal, nothing. He says, yes. He agrees with you. That's what they say. You're only using his knowledge. What he knows. If he knows, now you can talk to him. He said, look, there was nothing. How did life come? Where did it come from? So he said, well, it just came like that. He says, what? You explain how it started. A group of amoeba, protoplasm, they thought for themselves that now we will collate and break up and collate and eventually we'll make ourselves into an elephant. Huh? Is that what they did? This another group says, I'll make myself into a gorilla. Another one says, I'll make myself into a monkey. Another one says, I'll make myself into a chimpanzee. Another one says, I'll make myself into a donkey. Another one says, I'll make myself into a pig. Come on, come on, tell me now. They thought out all these things. This amoeba, which has got no brains. It had the brains, now created this man. He said, must have eyebrows. You know, so look at your eyes, how it is protected. How many times you had blue eyes, and your eye was not damaged because of this construction. Then each and everything is a miracle. Man is a miracle. 
but we are so close to ourselves with that we don't see it. Ask the doctor, the biologist, the physiologist, and then you start speaking about the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, each and every, their fingernails, you know, your teeth. When you go to the dentist and you go and see the diagrams of the teeth, the teeth, what it consists of, each and everything is a miracle. You thought it out? That amoeba thought it out? He said, yes. He said, look, you are the most superstitious guy on earth. Any little thing you see, you say somebody made it. This little pin, I have a pin here. Yeah. This one has a big head. I said, you know, it came by itself. He said, no, the guy is mad. Somebody made it. A match, matchstick. I said, it came by itself. He said, no, somebody made it. Look, if somebody told you it just came by itself, you say, he's mad, he's a lunatic. Nothing can come by itself. Somebody made it. This most complex machine, it came by itself. It thought out for itself everything, what you're doing about yourself. <laughs> Each and every little thing about him, you know. In the eardrums, the balance, that I can keep on standing here, you know, not fall down, you know, I'm straight. All this, what is doing it? All this come by accident? There is a creator. The only thing is in the concept. You see, he's worshipping men and monkeys, elephants and snakes, and he wants to justify that. See, it's the concept. Reason with him, but of course, as I said, now it depends upon his background and experience. You know, I can't just give you a pat answer and say, look, just tell him this and he'll be satisfied. You've got to find out from him, like suppose now I had a chance of meeting the fellow and as soon as he starts opening his mouth, I said, what is this, man? So everybody, you have to deal with them individually according to the background and experience. And uh, there is a tape available, you might enjoy it, from Hinduism to Islam. In other words, I'm explaining my people, ancestors, were Hindus, and how we became Muslims, and from what to what. And it explains all this, most of this. Show him, he'll enjoy it, and I say, inshallah, you'll also enjoy it. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to Islamica to support our efforts. Thank you.